Yes, narcissists have black and white thinking, meaning they see you as all good or all bad. And the moment that they see you as all bad, they're going to punish you for that shit. And the majority of the time, you haven't actually done anything to warrant this punishment. The moment you don't agree with them, they see you as all bad. The moment you try to set a boundary, they see you as all bad. The moment you do anything that doesn't align with their facade and their distorted reality, they see you as all bad. The moment they projected something onto you, like accusing you of lying or accusing you of cheating and decided it was true, they see you as all bad. Narcissists will hold imaginary things against you that you haven't even done to them. They'll create a whole narrative about you where you're this horrible person who has done all this f***ed up shit to them and then they'll decide that it's true and hold it against you and punish you for this shit. A lot of people in narcissistic relationships don't even understand what they've done wrong and why they're being punished so harshly by this person. And it's exactly because of what this comment says. The very instant that they perceive you as bad because of some imaginary thing that they've created in their head that you've done, you're going to get punished or discarded. All right, so this person says, my ex didn't speak to me for six days because I shaved my legs and he accused me of cheating. So let's get into it. So first of all, narcissists love to project. So much that if you listen closely, many times they will literally confess what they're doing to you by accusing you of doing it. So if they start randomly accusing you of cheating out of nowhere all the time when you've done nothing to make them think that you're cheating, it's probably because they're cheating. A lot of times these projections actually become part of their reality, meaning if they're accusing you of cheating all the time continuously, a lot of times they start to believe that you're actually cheating because narcissists believe that you are capable of doing the same up to them that they're doing to you. So they'll accuse you of doing something, eventually decide that it's true, and then many times punish you for doing it even though you never did it in the first place. So once they've decided that it's true, they will treat you accordingly as if you actually did this to them. It also helps them justify their behavior and what they've done to you if they decide that you did the same thing to them. And of course, it also helps them deflect and avoid accountability for what they did to you by putting the focus on this imaginary thing that you did to them. All right, so this person is asking, why do narcissists treat their friends so much better than their partners? So first of all, many narcissists have very surface level friends and these surface level friends are actually a source of supply for them. They help validate the narcissist's false self. So treating these people well helps them keep their facade alive because these people believe their mask is real. So a lot of times a narcissist's friends are enablers, so they keep them close. Birds of a feather flock together. But aside from all of that, treating friends and associates better than you is another form of gaslighting to make you question yourself. Asking yourself, why are you the only person that they're treating this way, which makes you feel like the problem. And it supports the narrative that they're trying to push that the way that they treat you is your fault. It's also a way to trigger you and confuse you within your own sense of self because it may cause you to feel unreasonably jealous about their relationships with their friends, which in a normal context would come across as jealous and controlling. So if you try to bring it up to them, you're already set up to look jealous and controlling by questioning them about why they're so nice to their own friends. The whole thing is a huge mind f to devalue you and make you look and feel crazy while at the same time getting other people to admire them and validate their distorted reality. All right, so this person is asking, do narcissists tend to live in the past? This question is a little tricky, so let's get into it. So first of all, I want to point out that typically narcissists will accuse you of living in the past anytime you try to bring up something they've done to hurt you or try to confront them about something, even if it happened last night. They will still tell you that you're living in the past. And this is to avoid accountability for whatever they did to hurt you while at the same time making you feel like you're doing something wrong by bringing it up, which eventually causes you to silence yourself and not bring it up anymore. But there is a huge double standard that comes along with that because at the same time, narcissists will also bring up everything from your past and try to use it against you. They are known for holding grudges. They will even use things against you from your past that happened before you even met them. Or they'll use things from your past and take it completely out of context to make it seem like you've done something wrong to avoid accountability for something that they've done wrong. So yeah, actually narcissists do live in the past. They're waiting to use your past against you. But don't get it confused with victims trying to bring up something to the narcissist that they never got closure on because the narcissist never took accountability and that's when the narcissist accuses the victim of living living in the past. Narcissists and sleep deprivation. Let's talk about it. Some narcissists will keep you up all night long arguing with them, going in circles with them, talking about the same shit over and over where you're defending yourself and over explaining yourself and you don't even know what you're talking about anymore. They will wear you the down with this late night, all night long word salad. And a lot of times this becomes a pattern in the relationship where you're up all night having these arguments with them, trying to fix them. When your body's not getting any sleep like that on a regular basis, 
you're that much more susceptible to gaslighting. You're that much more susceptible to being sucked into their distorted reality and not knowing what's real anymore. Being with a narcissist already makes you feel like you're going crazy in the first place. So when you're not getting any sleep, it takes it to the next level with how crazy you feel. And that is exactly where the narcissist wants you. They want you to feel crazy. And then on top of that, this affects other aspects of your life because a lot of times you don't get any sleep and then you have to get up and go to work the next day. And then you're at work all day with anxiety, worrying about how you never reached a resolution with the narcissist and now you can't function at work. Then you go home the next night and you do it all over again. You don't get any sleep once again. So now you're even more susceptible to the manipulation. And then your next day at work is even because it was another night of no sleep. Narcissists want you tired, they want you confused, and they want your reality distorted. This is extremely true with narcissistic people or other types of toxic people where they will betray you, not take accountability for it, and then you become overly paranoid about what they're doing because you don't trust them anymore and you feel insecure in the relationship and then they'll turn around and get upset at you for not trusting them even though they are the one who caused it and they haven't done anything to gain your trust back. In this situation, narcissists will also often use this as an opportunity to shift the blame to you and make you feel like the toxic one by making it look like you're being controlling by monitoring their every move, even though they are the one who made you this paranoid about their every move. It's gaslighting. It can make you question yourself. It can make you question your reality. It can make you question whether or not you are the toxic one because damn, why the hell am I monitoring their every move at this point? Am I being controlling? the original issue of why this is even going on and the principle of the whole thing gets lost, which is that they betrayed your trust and this is why you're feeling this way. You were driven to this point because of all the deception and the betrayal and the lies. And at this point, you are obsessed with trying to figure out if they're still doing what they did to you before because they never took accountability for it. You're not crazy. So this is a really great comment in reference to being with a narcissist. It says, the best part is when you realize there were never good times and your values and personality are what generated the story, not them. So let's get into it. Just how a narcissist projects all of their awful qualities onto you, <clears throat> you do the same thing. You project all of your amazingness onto them. You're a good person and you always try to do the right thing. <clears throat> so you projected that onto them and assume that they're eventually going to do the right thing and change. You're someone who tries to see the best in people and give people the benefit of the doubt. So even when the narcissist was doing fucked up shit to you, it got brushed under the rug because again, you're trying to see the best in them and that's how you were able to have good times with them. You have good intentions with the people that you care about and you projected that onto the narcissist as well. When they did things that didn't have your best interest at heart, you thought to yourself, well, I would never do anything with a malicious intent, so th that's not the reasoning behind it. It must have been a mistake. You were so full of love and pureness, and you projected all of that love onto them to where it felt mutual, and it didn't help that they were mirroring you sometimes, too. You were the fixer in the relationship. Your mood depended on where you stood with the narcissist and whether y'all were on good terms or not. So you were constantly trying to create good times with them so that your anxiety would be reduced. It was a constant chase to get back on good terms with them. Otherwise you'd have anxiety for the whole day. So you created multiple opportunities all the time for these good times to occur. You did cute shit for them. You went out of your way for them. You planned fun stuff for y'all to do together. And just because they attended, you attribute that time being good to them. They were just a physical body that was there in that moment to take advantage of an opportunity to get supply from you. And then during the times when you were spending time together, all they were doing was mirroring you. That wasn't them. Those aren't qualities that they have. It was just a reflection of you. Essentially, any time that you had good times with this person, you were brushing your own needs under the rug and silencing yourself and not bringing up anything that bothered you. That's how the good times were able to be good. You made the good times good, not that raggedy narcissist.